Mike Taro asked me to talk about an interesting way of looking at digital scanning. Let me get this going and we'll be good to go. Hang on. Yep, that would help. So, over the past five years, digital scanning has really been about crown and bridge scanning. How do you get a margin? How do you interpret it? And how do you send that? And the question is, is for years, all you've been doing is taking impressions. And for years, that's what digital scanning was. I want to take us for the next 20 minutes through about six cases and show you why digital scanning is far more than capturing an impression. To me, it's about not only increasing the comfort of your patients, but it's about creating value and experience. So what does that mean? How do we create value and experience from a technology? I think you'll see it in the next five minutes. Digital is about increasing the quality of care and efficiency, and I'm going to show you this in my last case today. And how all of this really culminates in more efficient flow. So imagine here you are seeing a new patient. Can you improve your diagnostics? Can you improve your documentation, your visualization and communication? So as I look at you and I go, you've taken thousands of impressions. And you're looking at this impression and you're evaluating it. But the truth be told, there's so much more that's going on in an impression via digital scanning. So I show this slide, and this is part of my course tomorrow. This is modern day diagnostics. What are modern day diagnostics? You start with digital x-rays and you go to fluorescence, transillumination, digital records, and comb beams. I'm going to pull all of this together in the next 15 minutes. So for example, carry view, sold by Dexis, far more accurate than a bite wing x-ray, far more accurate. We don't take bite wing x-rays on children in our practice anymore, nor on adults unless indicated up till the age of 20. Why? A bite wing x-ray is not as accurate as transillumination. We would never do a sealant without using fluorescence because caries can be under remineralized fissures. And so all of this then leads to how do digital records and comb beams add far more to our practices? So this is modern day diagnostics. I couldn't imagine not having any of these in my practice. They're all included in new protocols and new ways to capture everything. So here's the question. You diagnose a problem and you tell the patient this is what you need to do. What is the percentage of treatment planned dentistry that has not begun in the first year in the United States? What do you think? Say it again. So 60%. So basically 60% is not even started in the first year. Would you say that's a problem in dentistry? It's a huge problem. So the actual number is 78% of dentistry is not started year one. So here's the dentist taking an explorer and a digital x-ray and hunting and pecking. And yet we're absolutely not communicating with our patients. Let's go to the different level. So digital scanning to me has become the mainstay of my initial exams and communication. How so? Let's start with Irma. Yeah. Irma comes in last week and we take a series of x-rays and she's got a dark yellow tooth. How do I explain to Irma what's going on, why a tooth is calcified, what are her treatment plan options? You can take photos, I'll show you photos. But in this case, look how easy this is. So all I have to do is have my assistant while I'm in another room do an eye record. She'll scan the patient, and now all I'm doing, instead of bringing an image to the patient, I bring Itero over. It's all about the experience. Now we're talking about tooth number eight, a small part, a small problem, because she's got far bigger problems. So this is what happens. 
So she comes in. She comes from another dentist. She's been going every three months for scalings. I don't think so. She's got tremendous perio problems. How do I explain this? I can bring up my x-rays, but in the same eye record, I can now show her. So we have deep pockets here. We have deep pockets here. How do we want to handle this? I'm not worried about the occlusal fillings. I'm worried about taking care of her overall. This is Jean. So Jean comes in and she's got multiple problems. My assistant takes five minutes, two and a half minutes upper arch, two and a half minutes lower arch, just creates the record. She's got a problem with tooth number three, it's tender. So I try to explain to her without pulling her cheek over, what are we gonna do? So this is sitting right in front of her, just pull it right up, and we take a comb beam scan. It's amazing what you will see on a comb beam scan. So we're gonna focus on tooth number three. There's your root canals. Here's your cyst. An untreated canal, because normally two canals. All of this is sitting in my room with my eye tarot, with a comb beam. Is she gonna go get her work elsewhere? Absolutely not. Showing you the sagittal view of the defect itself. So now what happens is, my patient is in here, and what happens is I'm allowed to be the general of who she's gonna go see. So if she goes to the endodontist, I'm sending this record. If I'm gonna have to take out number 20 on her lower arch and number 17, I'm guiding my team where we're going. So imagine now, same comb beam, a 10 by eight, So it's not like you're taking more cone beams. Vertical root fracture, no bone. I'm, a, I'm allowed to walk this patient through it, then explaining to her, we're missing teeth. If we lose this tooth, are we going to a removable or are we adding implants? The reason this is critical is I need to know how to treatment plan this. Am I socket grafting this and in, in, in in knowing I'm doing an implant, or am I socket grafting this with a non-resorbable material, showing her then that that won't resorb will keep will keep that foundation for a partial. She wants an implant. I'm guiding my surgeon what to do, or I'm doing it. This is the visual aspect of what we're doing. This is an occlusal view, an occlusal gram. I can look at doing occlusal equilibration. Same patient, showing her. If we lose this tooth, now I can even on the comb beam start planting my implants all within that first hour. Christina. Christina has had orthodontics for seven years, three times. So a total of three orthodontists and she absolutely doesn't want to do it again. A beautiful girl. Traditional photography. The issue, six and seven. Am I going to add a composite here and close the diastema and throw everything off? Different views. Does she like the color of her teeth? This is how basic this can get. All I'm trying to do is bring her images to the forefront. Take an eye record. I can take an eye record. I can rotate everything and now communicate with my lab. So here's the issue. Occlusogram showing if there are any issues at all occlusally, any high spots, premature contacts. And so it's me sending to my lab, I want two virtual wax ups off my scanned image. Close the space six and seven with two veneers, or let's do five through 12 veneers and show her both. But again, I'm not taking impressions. I'm scanning and using the scan to both demonstrate to the patient. And now I can use the scan and just send it to the lab with the photos. This is modern day diagnostics to me. She's coming in next week and we'll get all the provisional from the lab to see what we're looking at. Janet. 
Janet is a really tough TMD patient. Big grinder. She's had different night guards, and if her night guard is off a little, it creates TMD. So now imagine you have to create the same vertical for your patient, the same vertical in an existing night guard. So what do you do? She has a history of numerous night guards. The last one opened her vertical a bit too much and created TMD where she had to go for physical therapy. Here's a beautiful part of the software. Here's her night guard. And all I want to do is match the vertical. So you take a multi-bite. All I'm going to do then is scan Janet in her normal bite without the night guard. That's bite one. So here's bite one in a multi-bite. All bite two is, here's her normal closure. Then I put the night guard in and I just scan her bite. I don't have to scan her arches, just her bite in the night guard. So this is her vertical opening in bite two with the night guard. This goes to the lab, lab translates it, I'm gonna get as close as possible a replica of the same vertical. Much harder, harder to do. Much harder to do if you were taking traditional impressions. And all I'm doing is just telling my lab what we're trying to do with a multi-bite. Telling them about her existing vertical, how I want to keep it is exactly the same so we can avoid TMD. Sydney. So Sydney comes in. And she's 72 years of age. She has tori, denies grinding, just had uh, an aorta valve replacement, and she's got perio. So let's take a look at how all of this comes out in one record. So, wrong, wrong slide, so we'll get rid of her there. So here's Sydney. And as you can see, all I'm doing is taking a record on Sydney. And I'm trying to explain, sorry, where an occlusion. And so what happens is we've restored her in monolithic zirconia, but if you look from the incisal view, you see all this wear. So I can show her immediately wear patterns. So let me kind of show you how time lapse is another cool software here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically scan a patient and in six months or a year, rescan them. And what we're absolutely going to be able to do is look at tooth wear. So if a patient denies grinding, I'll be absolutely possible, it will be totally possible to look at this and go, I can now see grinding. So before and after in one year. And this is the time lapse that they're now offering. So I'm going way beyond taking an impression for a tooth. So where does this go? This goes into recession. This goes into tooth wear. It's limitless in a sense of what we can be discussing with our patients. I have no idea why this is flicking back, so let me just... Okay, sorry. Let's go to James. Don't know why that happened. It's okay. So James comes in, and he's got a two-year-old broken zirconia bridge. Two years old. Here's the broken zirconia bridge. Spent $4,000 on it, and it's only two years old from another dentist in Houston, Texas. So what happens? I scan him preoperatively. I just scan him. I can show him the decay, but far more. I can show him the diminished vertical. Now, this is really, to me, such an advent. This will guide me as to, am I going to re-prepare the lower? Am I going to prepare these teeth? Do I have room to prepare these teeth? So here's the occlusal clearance. The occlusal clearance, preoperatively, on this zirconia bridge, is two-tenths to four-tenths thick right here. Can zirconia handle that? Absolutely not. So if you have a short tooth, how are you going to create occlusal clearance? You're either going to adjust the bottom, adjust the top, or you're going to have to come up with a different restoration than zirconia. Minimal, minimal again, occlusal clearance here, 
for this bicuspid, and it's a short tooth. The opposing has a gold crown and a porcelain to zirconia crown on number 30. So watch what happens here. On the occlusogram, I can see the opposing. I've only got two tenths clearance there. Am I going to adjust the gold and put a, gold, a hole in the gold crown? Not a chance. So when you look at all this, it really allows yourself to be guided, truly guided into decision making. Occlusal clearance, color view. So here's the beauty. I can sit him up and walk him through how we're going to make a decision. This allows Jim to understand, are we going to put an implant in? Are we going to make a bridge? What are we going to do to come up with the decision-making opportunity here? And this is the experience that digital allows you openly that traditional implant. their throat and when you're done you can absolutely see what retraction does if your lab can't see these margins then there's something wrong this is the beauty of digital the ADA just did a study and most dentists can't even read their own impressions much less the lab then this is so easily read occlusal clearance we created enough clearance here this was as narrow as could be. So I only had two tenths of clearance. So what do you do? So let's say you want to adjust it right now. You've already taken your impression. The beauty of digital is you don't have to repack your cord, modify your preparation. The beauty is you use a tool called the eraser tool. And all you're going to do is circle the occlusal area that you want to reprep, reprep the area, and then just scan the area. You don't have to worry about the margins at all. And as Itero, you go online and learn all this training, it really makes your life so much easier. Because so many of us will under prepare, see that under preparation, and now if you need just another one or two tenths, just circle this, erase it. We prepare the tooth and bam, you're home. This is how it makes us far more efficient. Here's your eraser tool. Now all you're going to do is rescan this, save it with your green dot. That's what you're trained on. Off to the lab it goes. It's easy enough. So ultimately, ultimately I had one millimeter of clearance here, 0.4 millimeters to 0.5 on my molar, Definitely not enough for zirconia. This was a failed zirconia bridge. And ultimately, we made a gold crown and a monolithic, very cosmetic zirconia crown. Cemented with Theracem for number one from Bisco and Ceramer from Doxa number, on number five. Both calcium releasing cements. This tooth needs more retention, so it's a resin cement with calcium release. This is a pure calcium alumina with calcium release. 
So ultimately, it guided me to come up with the proper restoration, proper preparation, and that's the advantage of digital. So in these cases, I, I really think it helps us diagnose occlusal issues. In this case, it allowed me to communicate what the problem was to the patient, use an eraser tool if I didn't prepare it enough, then ultimately to discuss it with my lab and come up with the ideal materials. This is where digital is taking us, from the initial exam to recall exams to treating our patients more efficiently. That's what digital scanning is doing in my practice, and I'm open to any questions, anything at all, happy to ask. If not, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.